Right. So at this point, we'd like to um, officially uh, open up the lava tube and give you a little tour through some of the changes that we just talked about today. Well, yeah, this is one of our new signs that identifies the key hazards that uh, exist in any lava tube. Rockfall, low ceilings, tripping hazards, standing water, and light, lack of it. Mahuku is open. It's my pleasure to be able to open Nahuku, the Thurston Lava Tube, to over one million visitors every year for, from here on out. So there's some, been some natural changes inside the lava tube and some restoration of some of the natural systems in, in the lava tube in the absence of human activity during these months. So we've seen ohia roots that have grown down from the ceiling of the cave almost to the floor, including some right here on the bridge. Mm -hmm. And then the microbial mats, which are white and coat the walls and ceiling, have also expanded considerably. So we ask the visitors not touch either those roots or, wall or walls in order to preserve them for future visitors that can come in and experience that same natural cave condition that they got to. you can see a, an area of uh, rocks that were some loose rocks that had fallen and we've of course removed any of the rocks that have fallen or that we have taken down in order to be able to continually monitor if additional rocks are falling as part of our ongoing monitoring of the conditions here within Nahuku. And as you can see here by the absence of um, well-established microbial mats that this is an area where some rocks um, fell out and we had to remove some additional rocks. You can see one of two crack monitors. It's sending real time data uh, monitored by our radio dispatch. And they can detect sub millimeter movements in the rock. And so this rock that the bottom end is attached to was one that we were concerned about it moving. And so uh, this crack monitor, as Ben said, will send real time data. Um, and if there's a large larger scale movement um, that that crack monitor detects, then we can take action as necessary to either close the tube or to more frequently monitor activity. Yeah. But if you um, were to turn off your lights and not shine on it, you would really quickly see that um, you won't even know it is there. So here is one of the crack monitors that we installed on one of the larger cracks that opened up in 2018. And this crack monitor will detect sub-millimeter changes in the space between the rocks and the wall. And that will help us identify if there's any imminent hazard of that rock falling so that we can close the tube and ensure visitor safety. But in the dark, if there's no light, you won't even notice that that crack monitor is there. We painted it brown and with the light being down on the floor, um, to give you as much of a natural experience in the cave as possible. This is the lowest area in the lava tube uh, and so is also a rock that we're concerned may fall directly down because of some cracking around its perimeter and so we've installed these barricades to alert visitors of the low ceiling and also to prevent anyone from standing underneath here if this rock were to fall down. Watch your heads of course. So at this location, we have uh, one, one area where you can see a lot of the changes that have occurred here in the lava tube. So in this particular site, we identified a few rocks that had fallen already um, that were piled up here on the ground. And uh, when we tested this area, we, of course, before we removed anything, we tested it to make sure that it was really eminently going to fail. And if it seemed like it was stable, we would leave it in place, again, trying to leave as natural a condition as possible. But in this particular area, there was a, a lot of large rocks that were very loose and that we felt needed to come down so that they didn't fall on a visitor. Because we have so many thousands of visitors in here every day, even though there's a lower chance, uh, probability of that rock falling, there's a higher likelihood that if it does, it's going to hit somebody because there's people in here all day, every day. Also, this is a great spot to see uh, the many ohia roots that have grown down from the ceiling. 
And this is an area where we also had a lot of mud and standing water, where we've removed that mud and brought gravel back in in order to uh, make a, uh, a safe and smooth experience for visitors as possible. Some roots that, in this location, hang almost touching the floor, and we hope that they'll stay as long as they can, and we ask that visitors, again, not touch the Ohia roots uh, to preserve them for future visitors as well. It's a neat feature of the cave. One of the most fascinating things about these roots is that they have their own little biome that grows on them, and there are insects that are endemic to the caves that actually live their whole life on these roots. So please uh, protect not only the roots, but the animals that live on them. Yeah, the uh, official name and the um, Board of Geographic uh, names is, remains the Thurston Lava Tube. Uh, however, in consultation with our Kapuna Council, uh, almost 20 years ago, uh, the name Nahuku uh, was uh, adapted for use. We are, uh, we intend to, um, in, the, in the coming weeks, go to the Board of Geographic Names and uh, seek to change the name of the Lava Tube officially to Nahuku. Nahuku. Yeah. which means the protuberances, which refers to the, um, the kind of stalactite-like features that uh, are featured on the wall and the ceiling of the tube, and that unlike those in a limestone or karst cave, were formed during the exit of lava from the tube and are not being rebuilt or recreated. So we ask that visitors respect the namesake of that lava tube feature by not touching the walls or yeah. the ceiling. Experience Nahuku with your eyes, with your feet, with your ears, but not your hands. Who you, who you wear? <laughs> <laughs> well, we are going to be monitoring the heavy times of visitation, which is between 10 uh, and 3 p.m. And yes, rangers will be ticketing people who violate the time, the timed uh, parking rule. Uh, or if they park illegally, which was all, uh, also a problem before the eruption, and uh, we still we experienced that at our visitor center yesterday. People parking on the grass, so they, people will be ticketed if they violate uh, the rules. But we've yeah. we've made extra efforts to provide additional parking at the Kilauea Iki Overlook, um, and to, there are some amazing vistas of walk through the rainforest and some amazing vistas of not only. Uh, the Kilauea Iki Crater, but also into Kaluapele, the caldera, as well as Mauna Loa, and even some vistas of Mauna Kea that we've recently cleared along that trail. So it's a really spectacular hike, and we really encourage visitors to park there at Iki and enjoy that hike on their way to the lava tube. Were those new lookouts that you added between Kilauea Iki and here? I walked in, I was stunned. Yeah, the there's a, so it's mainly overlooks that had not been maintained for some years, and we've uh, reopened and reestablished those scenic vistas. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, we're telling uh, folks just to uh, plan your adventure. We have a lot of great planning tools on our website. Prepare for limited to no parking at key destinations during peak hours. And consider hiking that premier hike uh, from Devastation Trail where you can see five park destinations but only have to park one time.